Hi everybody, um, this is a video tutorial. I'm starting by showing you the end result. Uh, this is Copper Canyon. It is a painting, resin painting that I completed. Um, revisiting the palette of colors and products from Passion and, um, and the tray that I recently did. And I just added some turquoise blue to the palette to kind of take an interesting new kind of twist on an old palette. Um, I hope you enjoy this studio tutorial. And uh, I'm really enjoying this palette, so hopefully you'll find it interesting. So this painting was created on a wooden artist panel. The panel measures uh, 24 inches by 18 inches wide. And these, the first color that I have put down is the Mum's Millennium Tattoo Ink, revisiting that again. And that is in the color of Doodoo -doo Brown. And uh, that's mixed into clear resin, as is all of the products. You will notice that uh, I spray painted to prepare my wooden panel with gold metallic paint. I did that as a trial. I wanted to see if it would have some reflective properties that it brought to the more translucent colors. So um, we will see how that progresses. So the Mum's Millennium Tattoo Ink is down. And now I am going to put next to it a mica powder because I like to mix my products next to each other. Um, so I started with ink and now I am putting down black diamond pigments. Uh, it's a mica powder essentially and it's in medieval copper. Um, I was informed by one of the viewers that this product is no longer available on Amazon, which is a shame. However, Black Diamond Pigments have a new product called Copper Penny. And looking at that, I suspect it is very similar, if not the same product. Now, what I'm take, putting down now is the uh, Black Diamond Pigments in Diamond Hazelnut. You'll see that that brown that's going down now has a, um, a metallic shimmer. The Black Diamond Pigments, the colors will say the color name, and some of them will have diamond within the color name. If it has diamond within the color name, that's telling you that this particular pigment is essentially the color, which this one is hazelnut brown, but because it has diamond in the name, it has very sparkly addition to it. Um, for, you know, if you put it under light, it uh, reflects the light. Very pretty. And I've just put the cup down because I like to maximize all of my products. Um, when I'm using my colors in my cups, I rarely don't use all of my products. I'm typically going to use all my products. And now the uh, next color that's going down is my mixture, which is golden fluid acrylic. And what I do is I put in about 70% nickel azo gold, that's quinacridone nickel azo gold by Golden Fluid Acrylic. Um, actually, sorry, 30% nickel azo gold. Uh, and I mix in 70% Golden Fluid Acrylic Transparent Red Iron Oxide. So it's predominantly the red iron oxide, but the addition of the quinacridone nickel azo gold gives it, warms it up uh, and gives it kind of a little bit of a, kind of a reddish copper tint to it. It definitely enhances the color. 
And both of those golden fluid acrylics are classified as translucent. And so that's really um, excellent when you're trying to create the illusion of depth because it means that, as you can see when you look at the canvas, if you, if you imagine this is a clock face, if you go down to what would be, I guess, about 7 o'clock and just look above, you'll see that the red has rolled over the black diamond pigment in the diamond hazelnut, followed by the copper. It has rolled over that, and you can see the products underneath. And as I start to lay my products down, you'll see that there's some interaction going on between um, products with each other, and that creates some um, um, effects naturally, which you don't even need to manipulate to, uh, to actually achieve. Now, I want to mention that this painting, I added turquoise, uh, teal, metallic teal, turquoise, same kind of color, but I, I was trying to find the right color, and I typically do not use what they deem as craft paint. I'm inclined to use uh, golden fluid acrylics a lot, and I couldn't quite find the color that I was looking for, and I found it in a deco art paint called Dazzling Metallics is the range, and I found a metallic teal that was really bang on. It was exactly what I was looking for. So I decided to put it into this painting. I did a test piece, and I found that it didn't really have much interaction with any of the products around it, but I really wanted to use it. So what I'm doing now is I'm using my kind of my tapping motion, which I'm inclined to do, and I'm doing a little bit of um, manipulation of layers to create some extra transition, some extra interaction along the lines where different products are laying against each other. And the reason why I did that is because when I bring in the blue, the turquoise, I had realized it wasn't going to interact particularly. So I had to force some illusion of interaction around it. So that's why you're seeing me uh, spread different products together manipulate them by hand because I wanted to create some uh, illusion of interaction that may or may not have happened naturally. So that's what I'm doing right now. Um, I And this is always an option and I do this a lot. I actually am inclined to do some mixing by hand in a lot of my paintings because um, you can really create some great effects by either smoothing together like you're seeing me do or kind of a tap tap motion. Um, when you do a tap tap motion you don't blend but you do create a lot of transition and if you check out, uh, there's some of my tutorials on my ocean pieces. Those especially will show you what I mean when I say kind of a tap-tap kind of motion, um, creating transition without creating blending. So I, I would encourage you to uh, check those out too. And I always forget to say this, so I'm going to try and make an effort today. If you enjoy these videos, please hit subscribe because then when I post new videos, you will get an alert, which I do regularly. But also, it helps me in the YouTube search, their analytic tool. Um, if you subscribe, I guess it pushes me as more popular, I, I, I assume. And, um, and I would like my videos to reach as wide an audience as possible because I very much enjoy making them and receiving the feedback. So this is the first application of the metallic teal by DecoArt mixed in uh, clear resin, which obviously um, all of these colors are. 
And the clear resin that I'm using tonight is Pro Marine. It's available on Amazon. It's also available, they have an, a, an eBay store here in the USA. And I would encourage you to check it out on eBay because the price point appears to be better. Anyway, a clear, it's in clear resin. And this canvas, as I said, is 24 by 18 inches. And I mixed uh, 22 fluid ounces of resin to cover this piece. I'm inclined to be a bit liberal with my um, resin. Uh, I really fear running out I, and I don't want to, I don't rely on tilting my canvas to get coverage. So um, 22 fluid ounces is um, a good volume for this type of uh, area. So I've put down my metallic turquoise, well teal as it would be, which is a deco art dazzling metallic is the range. Um, and one of the challenges you will see of metallic paint that you don't get in um, other acrylic paints or mica powder is metallic paint is inclined to have um, like blending lines. You can see them. You know, uh, they're kind of following where I'm moving my finger. So you can actually see sort of, I'm trying to work, think of the word, you can see flow lines. Um, and you, you always really get that with metallic paint. And that's one of the challenges. You can actually end up with flow lines that don't really represent the way that you were um, seeing your painting as a piece. However, one of the benefits of resin is that when I torch those areas with my blowtorch to remove air bubbles, a lot of those um, flow lines will actually disappear. So, but it is a caution that you will you will notice that you appear to have um, a pattern on top of your metallics. Um, but like I said, that largely disappears with the application of heat. But you're also going to notice that if you, if you look at the blue, there doesn't appear to be any interaction immediately with the products around it. Um, and that's what I, I, I already had realized that from my test piece because I'm inclined to do test pieces. But to be honest, I, I still went ahead with it because I, I really love the color. It has a lot of pop to it. Um, so what I decided is I would come around these um, turquoise, teal blue um, colors with some more mica powder to maybe try and create in the illusion of interaction, even if there wasn't really true interaction. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I'm using the uh, Mayron Gold body, body Powder again um, and really enjoying that product. I've had my challenges with it because it has a very light consistency. When it's suspended in resin, it seems to retain its lightness. And when I say lightness, it, it's very different to mica powder. Mica powder has a bit of weight to it, it has a powder. Um, whereas the Mayron Gold body powder it comes out and it's almost like a talcum powder. So even in resin, talcum powder wants to sit at the surface. It has a, um, a chemical structure, I guess, of a very lightweight um, quality uh, to the product. But um, I'm kind of enjoying using it and Mayron have other metallic colors in their range and I, I think I'm going to invest in some of the other colors because now I feel like I'm mastering the product somewhat and, and enjoying using it. And another thing to note here is I haven't torched this piece at all yet. So what you see in the top left-hand side, you see some kind of 
um, bumps kind of thing. That's, that's air bubbles, and I, they will dissipate as soon as I put heat against them. And But it, the reason why I haven't torched it is because resin has a certain working life. It's relatively short. Some products say 20 minutes, some say 40 minutes. But even when you look at 40 minutes, this is a pretty short life cycle to work with. So resin, as it cures, it gets warmer. And so when you blowtorch it, you, in effect, speed up the curing process, okay? So what I found over time is that I should lay down my colors as much as possible before I torch because I want to maximize my working time. Now, the only issue with that uh, methodology is that a lot of you um, that watch also do acrylic pouring. You know, um, put in various colors in one cup and uh, doing what they call a dirty pour or putting your colors, colors down in a puddle pour and then tilting the canvas. I use that, that um, method also, and it really does create some interesting results. And ever so often, like myself and you guys, you, you get lucky and you get a really great piece. The problem with resin is in order to tilt a canvas, so if I applied all these colors down as a puddle pour, and then I wanted to use that methodology of tilting, which I do do, um, you would have to torch your resin in order to do that. Because right now the resin is on the canvas. It's in a liquid state because it's just been mixed. But it's not the fluidity or the viscosity is not such as like... Um, it doesn't have the same viscosity as paint mixed with a pouring medium, flow troll, water, etc. It would not move like that. Um, it may Parts of it may move, parts may not, in which case you'll get overlapping and you've ruined your painting. So if you do want to use that technique with resin and actually tilt your canvas and allow the, the products to move around, um, you would have to preheat the resin so you'd have to blow torch it early so um, just a caution just a word to the wise uh, that's the reason why I don't have to torch it is because in this respect I'm not planning to tilt it so um, if you were going to tilt the colors just make sure you torch them first because you would want that viscosity to be warm and that would give you the fluid consistency that would allow you to tilt the canvas and create those um, effects. And you can see that in my tutorial uh, that's good for the painting with the name Passion. There's Passion 1 and Passion 2. Passion 1 is the one you need to look at, um, where I started out with a plan not to tilt, and then I changed my plan to tilt the canvas and um, and I had to preheat the, the resin and know that it was in a fluid state to enable me to do that. So I continue to apply the gold. Um, I'm applying the gold with a popsicle stick. I'm very careful not to kind of drag it over the painting. And I'm just looking at the shapes and trying to form um, a design of when you're looking at this piece, you know, what will the eye follow? So that, that's what I'm doing right now. And again, I haven't torched it yet, so um, I still have workability. And uh, so I'm putting down my gold. And what I do in a minute, and you'll see me do it, is I often come behind, once I have all my gold down, I will get a clean popsicle stick and I will run it directly through the gold line into the resin um, so that I'm able to kind of push it down um, and just kind of, you know, um, in, make it interact with whatever it's sitting next to. 
So that's what I'm doing right now. I'm just putting this uh, Mayron Gold down. And just so you know, you know, you'll see how much I use of this. I mixed about half a fluid ounce of resin with the Mayron, so not a great deal. Um, you know, what I found with Mayron is you don't really need very much to get an effect because of the going back to what I previously explained, it has a talcum powder um, consistency in its own right. So you, when you put it on your piece, you don't lose it. It sits on the top, so you don't need a lot of it. Um, you really need to use it somewhat sparingly, unless you want a lot of gold um, kind of, you know, impression. If you want to create gold as a key color within your piece then by all means use more um, it definitely gives some great results and what I notice is when it's curing on my uh, studio table it continues to kind of um, develop out and and gain its characteristics now you've just seen me put down a little bit of more of the um, red and that was because as I was going around with my gold, I noticed that it was it looked a little bit more translucent in that area and it seemed a bit lighter in comparison to the red colours around it. And it didn't really look that attractive. So I uh, came behind and just applied the residue of red that I had. And... Uh, and, and I'm carrying on just kind of outlining shapes of interest. Um, but it, it is interesting. If you look at this, so again, think of this as a clock face. And in the middle, if you're in the middle and you cast your eye down to go from the middle down to what would be the five o'clock or the right bottom corner, look at the red there with the brown so what's happened and then the gold on top of that so what's happened is the brown the diamond hazelnut um, pigment powder by black diamond was down and then the red was on top of it just so lightly overlapping and the brown has slipped underneath it so you're seeing now the brown coming up from underneath um, and that's one of the beauties of translucent paints in comparison with uh, mica. So I'm torching now. Um, and I did spray a little bit there. You, you didn't see. Uh, I spray one of two products onto my paintings. Um, and I don't put a lot down. But tonight, it really depends on which one I choose or pick up in, the, in my studio. Because... Essentially, they create the same kind of effects. So what I just sprayed on there was acetone, which to the females in the group, that's really now varnish remover as we would think of it. But this one is 100% um, acetone and uh, it is a nail polish remover. And um, you try and always look for 100% acetone. And I bought this bottle in Walmart um, and it is marked 100% acetone and it is in the cosmetic department because some of the nail polish removers now have conditioners in them and uh, they, they make a cloudy effect on your painting. So I sprayed it on just because I wanted the gold Mayron powder essentially that was sitting on the surface to just break apart a little bit. So here's what I was saying about, um, referring to a few minutes ago. I've taken a clean popsicle stick and I've, I'm digging it into the resin. And I'm running back across those gold Mayron lines that I introduced. And what I'm doing is I'm just kind of pushing them down a little bit, kind of tapping away, just so that uh, they're not too defined as lines, because that's not the effect I was looking for in this piece. So I'm just kind of dragging them along and kind of just, just breaking them up a little bit and just kind of changing the status quo on them a little bit and um, making sure they're not quite as defined as they were. 
And if you look where my, my popsicle stick is right now, as you look, forget that I've moved above, look at the blue that I just passed. Can you see that the mayron is sitting on top and the blue is just underneath my hand now. I'm just about to move again. The blue has slipped under the mayron and uh, is coming up from underneath it. So it's kind of just broke through and it's kind of interacting a little bit with the um, diamond hazelnut by Black Diamond Pigments. And that's what I like. I really go for what are kind of natural interactions rather than um, necessarily manipulating my piece by tilting, etc. I'm always trying to push the reactions in their own right versus me trying to kind of manipulate them. So I'm really liking it so far. It's very interesting painting. So I'm just looking at it right now and uh, kind of working a little bit more to gold in um, and just kind of doing my final touches. And sometimes, you know, I look at the painting like I am now and I, I see maybe a defined line that's not really what I was going for, so... I will kind of blend it out and maybe introduce another color, um, just a different effect. Diffuse it out. And the reason why I have such great working time is because I waited a long time before I torched. That really assists me. And I apologize about my studio light in the top left hand corner. It doesn't seem to matter where I go in my studio, but I catch a light. And I'm just adding um, some remainder of the red that I, <clears throat> excuse me, the red that I have. Um, such a beautiful colour, I definitely don't want to waste any. And I'm just applying it, which, you know, that last application being there uh, means that it will be quite rich in that spot because, um, you know, it's one of the last ones to go down. And I'm just lightly tapping just to blend it in, make sure it doesn't appear to be a late addition. And I'm lightly torching, I'm really finishing up now, getting rid of any air bubbles, making sure that I have that glass-like finish. And uh, I'm going to spray a little bit more of the 100% acetone, just to make sure that I have um, the gold kind of breaking up as much as possible and transitioning. Here I have an effect on any mica powders um, and um, the mayron a little bit does help just with some of the transitions. And towards the end of the video, uh, you will see some close-up shots um, that I've put into the video. I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, found it helpful in some way as you take this journey with me in resin art.
I'm still looking and uh, kind of tweaking it a little bit, seeing some defined shapes that have just started to happen due to natural reactions. I'm coming behind just kind of trying to create some focus there by using the Mayron. This is probably one of my most favorite enjoyable parts of resin art is the coming in and just defining and uh, tweaking some of the reactions. And uh, this this painting I did yesterday uh, evening, and uh, I'm just breaking that out a bit, make it more subtle. Um, this morning I photographed it, and uh, it's kind of a stormy day in North Carolina, so the lighting is not at its best. But uh, I can tell you that um, this this painting's quite quite beautiful. Uh, uh, it stood at the moment in my dining room. And, um, you know, I, I, I would like anybody that could walk through the room and not stay, stop and have a look at it because of the, the, the turquoise just jumps out at you and demands your attention. You know, in combination with that red by Golden Fluid Acrylics, which I adore and uh, really is kind of jump out and kind of demand you to look at it. So I'm quite excited about this palette. I need to work on that blue a little bit to see if I can create more effects with colors around it. Um, I'm sure I can, I just need to kind of figure out how to do it. So here's some close-ups, and the lighting was not at its best, but they do give you some um, some insight into some of the colors and the effects in the piece. There's a, you know, every time I look at it, I see another little element that I, I like. It's uh, got a lot of detail in there. Well, hope you enjoyed it, guys. Bye.